Hello and welcome to Looking Through Luke, a YouTube series where we systematically work through one of the ancient biographies of Jesus known as the Gospel of Luke. My name is James and I'm so glad that you've found us. Uh, whether you're a skeptic, a curious onlooker, or indeed a follower of Jesus, my hope is that together uh, we would have a clearer view of who Jesus is, uh, the claims that he made and what he did, and that along the way we might even meet Jesus himself. Feel free to ask questions or comment below uh, as we learn together. I'm so glad that you're here, so let's jump into our next episode. Welcome to Looking Through Luke. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm really excited about today's uh, episode uh, because we have been tracking for about 12 weeks or so since we began uh, at the very beginning of Luke's account of the biography of uh, Jesus, his life and ministry. And for the last 12 weeks, we're focused on the events leading up to the birth of Jesus. Uh, that includes... Um, the events of the birth of John and uh, what happens to Zechariah at the temple and his wife Elizabeth and then on to Joseph and Mary and finally we had the birth of Jesus and his parents have taken him to the temple and uh, Simeon and Anna have um, blessed and prophesied over the baby Jesus. And now we've finally finished. This is a concluding part of all, if you will, of the groundwork that Luke has been laying so that Theophilus and his readers and we uh, might be able to make progress in, in knowing the certainty of what's been taught. Uh, so this is, if you will, a transition as we come to the end of the first section of the story of Jesus' life. He's 12 years old. In this, in this story today, he's on the edge of adulthood. So this is a, a transition between childhood and adulthood. Let me just read uh, the story. It comes from Luke chapter 2, verse 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. What was Jesus like as a boy? Maybe I've got too much time on my hands, but I've often wondered about that. Did he cry? Did a bad word ever slip when he first banged his hand with a hammer as he learned from his dad how to use those tools as a carpenter? Did he ever get up to mischief, pull any pranks? Well, we don't know. All we have from between Jesus' birth, and when he begins his ministry as a man of 30, is one story, the story we've just read, of him as a 12-year-old boy. One story. I wonder, if you could choose one story from your childhood to convey your life to that point, I wonder which one you would choose. Oh, I have no idea what story I would choose. 
no idea what it could be. It might be a funny one, maybe it would be a, a serious one, a traumatic one, probably some uh, event that uh, came from a core memory, that something that was very formative. Well, this is the one story we have of Jesus as a boy. And, and apart from the fact that I'm excited that we've moved through his birth and we're getting towards uh, his life and, and ministry as a man, this is a really important uh, story for us in Luke's account because it's actually the first time we hear Jesus speak. These are his first recorded words. And what they reveal to us, as we'll unpack in a second, is how he sees his purpose in life. That's right. How a 12-year-old understands and sees his purpose in life. Well, as I said, this, is, uh, this represents a transition between childhood and, and adulthood. Uh, some 12-year-olds actually know what they want to be uh, when they grow up. They know what they're meant to do and, and, and they've got dreams in their minds of what it's, life's going to look like. And, uh, and it's astonishing to think that they carry that all those years and end up becoming what they thought they might. Uh, my wife has a similar story about uh, her passion and desire to become a dietitian. Uh, other children have no idea what they want to do in life well beyond childhood. Uh, I remember that was me. Uh, I got to the end of high school, and when you get to the end of high school, people are constantly asking you, what are you going to do next? What are you going to go study at university? What are you going to do with your life? And I got so tired of being asked that question because I, I had no idea what I was going to do that I began to answer that by telling people I was going to become a chess grandmaster. Uh, most people didn't know if I was serious or not, uh, and the conversations usually ended pretty quickly afterwards. Uh, the truth is, I was pretty ordinary at chess, uh, and uh, the very first time I beat my father was the very last time that we played, but I'll, I'll leave that story of trauma for another time. Jesus gives us some insight here as a 12-year-old as to who he, he thinks he is and what he's meant to be doing with his life. Well, to get to that, uh, let's set up the context. Uh, Jesus, uh, his family have journeyed to Jerusalem. They journeyed to the temple once a year to celebrate the Passover. The Passover was the, the holiest, the, the most important, the most celebrated uh, day, event, feast in the entire Jewish calendar. And um, men were required to go once a year. Uh, women weren't. Uh, so the fact that Jesus' family is going is just another way of Luke showing how devout and faithful Jesus' parents are to God. This is, this is a good family. This is a family that's um, seeking to, to honour God in the way that they live. And so they head to Jerusalem. It was a 130k trip uh, from Nazareth where they lived, probably a three to four day journey via uh, caravan. Uh, my my uh, parents used to take us on an annual camping trip every year and we'd go to the Belgrave Heights Easter Convention. Uh, it was my parents' way of trying to make sure that they were instructing and encouraging their children, my siblings and I, to consider faith, to consider what it looked like to know God and follow God. Uh, well, this is the same, uh, this, is the, this is the Jewish equivalent. Jesus' family, his parents, are investing in Jesus. They're in instructing their children in the faith by making this annual trip to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And they would have traveled in a large group. They traveled with uh, relatives and friends. Uh, a large group traveled together. You had safety in numbers, but it was also just part of the joy of the occasion, heading down there and back together. They stayed for the whole week, the entire festival. Again, uh, Luke's telling us this just so that we know how, how faithful and devout Jesus' parents are. Well, of course, in the story, uh, we read that at the end of the festival... They return home, but Jesus, the boy Jesus, stayed behind in Jerusalem. And they travel on for the entire day. 
And it's only when they get to the end of the day and they're looking for Jesus, they realise he's not there. Uh, as I said, it's a large group of family and friends. Uh, Mary and Joseph would just assume that Jesus was amongst uh, friends and family spread out across the road as they're travelling. Uh, and uh, suddenly they realise he's not with them. Uh, you can imagine that conversation. I thought he was with you. Me? I, I thought he was with you. Uh, it's a terrible sinking feeling. Uh, if you've ever had um, the misfortune of losing a child, I remember uh, these, these videos really portray uh, how average my parenting skills are, but I remember the first time, the first time that I lost one of my children. Uh, we, I took them to a, a large farm uh, in the city, a working farm, uh, and uh, I was with another dad and we had our girls and I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I just remember uh, that one moment my daughter was with me and the next moment she wasn't. And, I, you know, that happens from time to time. You feel your heart raise a little bit, your, the, the pressure rises a bit, the blood pumps, and you look around, and in a matter of moments, you've located your child. Except in this, in this occasion, I, I didn't. And so the, the panic grew, and we, we uh, began asking others for help and, and searching far and wide to, to find my daughter. And, and in the back of my mind, I thought, at some point, I'm going to have to call my wife and explain to her that I can't find our daughter. Well, uh, eventually, I did find my daughter. Uh, as a little three-year-old, she'd climbed up a big fence and she was uh, busy patting the horses. Uh, the relief that I felt was palpable. Well, uh, you can imagine the anxiety uh, that Mary and Joseph feel. In fact, we don't even have to imagine it because we read uh, that when they found Jesus, Mary says to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Now, I, I lost my daughter for a good half an hour. Uh, Mary and Joseph had a day's travel out, a day's travel back, and then the next day, the third day, they finally locate him in the temple. And they find him, we're told, sitting amongst the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. Uh, I remember, I don't know who said it, but I remember uh, someone once saying uh, that you can tell uh, whether a person's intelligent by their answers, you can tell whether a person is wise by their questions. And we see Jesus there listening uh, to the teachers of the Lord, the religious leaders of the day, and asking questions. And the people around, the crowd around, are astonished at his understanding. They're amazed at his answers. Here is a boy with a, a thirst to understand and to discuss spiritual matters, spiritual questions. Uh, and and Jesus' wisdom amazes, astonishes those who are listening. Uh, here is, on the surface at least, a young boy who is evidently gifted. Now, if you peel back the curtain a little bit, we know that he's gifted by God. The parents finally find him at the temple uh, and they're astonished, we read. They're amazed. But it's not the same astonishment of the crowd at, at the boy's answers. Uh, this word astonished can also be translated amazed and relieved. There's a palpable sense of relief uh, and their anxiety, which has, has been driving them, bubbles out. And uh, it's actually the, the kind of um, uh, language that's used, one commentator describes as complaint language. Your father and I, you can tell that's the words of a mother, can't you? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. It's been a traumatic experience for mum and, dare I say it, for dad. And their parents are, are complaining, Jesus, how could you? How could you do this to us? Uh, my parents um, primarily complained uh, when I was 12 about the state of my bedroom. Uh, and I wish, back as a 12-year-old, I had the um, foresight to point to, to Jesus and say, well, look, at least I didn't run away for three days. Or actually, no. My, my, when I was growing up as a 12-year-old, my parents primarily complained about the state of my bedroom, how, how messy it 
it was. I wish I, I, wish I had the foresight to point to Mary and Joseph and, and tell my parents to wait until they had something to really complain about. And in the midst of this, we get Jesus' first words recorded here by Luke. Why were you searching for me? And didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? Now, there's a lot of debate uh, about what Jesus is um, trying to convey here, what it, what it really means. But I think there's a couple of things that are really obvious that we can take away. Firstly, Jesus has a really strong sense of identity with the Father, with God. God is his heavenly Father. Jesus knows who he is. This is, this is language of intimacy. Didn't you know I needed to be in my Father's house? Not God's house, my Father's house. But he also see that he's committed to the mission that God has sent him to do. Even as a a young boy, he has a clear sense that he's been sent by God, by his Father, and that there is a mission for him awaiting him. And this is a part of his preparation process. These conversations, these learnings, these discussions. Mom, Dad, this this is who I am. And this is what I'm meant to be doing. Don't you understand? Uh, So many parents can relate to that. How many times have have you, if you're a parent, have you heard a child say, or or perhaps you said to your parents, Mum, Dad, don't you understand? And uh, Luke tells us here that they didn't. But they did not understand. They didn't get, at this point, Jesus' identity, who he really was, and they didn't really get his mission, what he'd been sent to do. And you know what? It wouldn't just be his parents that would take some time to really work out who Jesus was and what he was doing. The same thing could be said of his followers. The same thing could be said of Luke's readers, of Theophilus. And the, the whole point of this biography, this account of Jesus' life, is so that Theophilus and others might know with certainty what they've been taught. And so it is with many today, perhaps with you uh, as it was once with me. We can be slow to understand. We don't understand who Jesus is and what he came to do. And that's why we're on this journey, friends, so that you and I might understand this more and more fully, that we would see that it isn't just myth or legend or, or wise tales, that this is a carefully recorded and documented account to reveal to us the, the incredible news, the, the unbelievable news, that's why Luke's being so careful, that Jesus is in fact the Messiah, the Deliverer, the one who saves, and that he came on, uh, on a mission that was given to him by his Father, so that through him we might be fulfilled, that we might uh, be saved, that we might be restored to God. But we're going to see that more and more clearly in the week's Ahead. So stick with us on the journey as we unpack it uh, from Luke's Gospel. Jesus knows, even as a 12-year-old, who he is and what he's about. It's unbelievable. It's groundbreaking. It's hard to get our heads around, particularly if we've never engaged with it before. And so we'll need to keep looking carefully to be certain for ourselves. See you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, Feel free to make a comment below. And if you did find the video helpful or interesting, please hit the thumbs up and give us a like and click the bell notification and subscribe. It really helps us get these videos out to a wider audience. Uh, We're not trying to build a massive following or channel. Uh, We are simply trying to communicate the truth of who Jesus is from the Bible. So if that's something that you can get behind, Uh, We love your support by doing those two simple things. It really helps us out. Thank you and see you next time.